and I would read the Bible and I'd read these stories about Joseph and he's a dreamer and my middle name's Joseph. I must be a dreamer. If God can speak to him in dreams, well, scripture says God's no respecter of persons. So if he did it for him, he can do it for me. Hi, Chris Felton here, and welcome to Cultural Catalyst. And we are here to help you learn to live fully alive. And we're Come interviewing on. people that are actually influencing culture, transforming cities, and actually people who actually do do the stuff. And I have Ben Armstrong with me today. Come on, Ben! I'm excited to be here. Yes, uh, you. I've known you since uh, 40 years. We figured out, right? Yep. 40 years since I was a little boy. Yep. I think my. I think Kathy babysat you at one point. She babysat me. She was my piano teacher at oh, one yeah, point. Oh yeah, I remember uh, that. All kinds of stuff. So good. And Ben oversees all our prophetic ministry at uh, Bethel Church. Got a lot of teams under him. Yep. Several people working for him. And he's been influencing the nation for quite some time. Ben, yeah. thanks so much for agreeing to be on this call. Yeah, I'm and excited. You are a, a husband with a wife, and you got three kids, right? Three. Yeah. yeah. Thought... Connor, Kira, and Madison. 23, almost 21, and 19. Ben, uh, ben, ben looks like he's about 30, but he's really like 48, right? Yeah. He's a man of great wisdom. Come on. Well, we're going to talk about prophetic ministry, spiritual intelligence today. I, I got some things we wrote down to ask you. How? Uh, let me ask you this, Ben. When did you first know that you were a prophet? Like, what? How long's? What happened? Yeah. I have my bathtub story. You yeah. know my bathtub story. I, I, I don't think you have a bathtub story. My, my, no, not a bathtub story. Shower? I actually got my call as a prophet in a dream. Yeah. And and then it took probably 14 years mm -hmm. be, after that dream for it to actually show up in my life. Um, you know, seven years after I got hired on as a school and ministry pastor. Yeah. Uh, by you. Yeah, used to be one of our revival group pastors. Yeah, and first year I did that for seven years, and then it took seven more years to develop. And I think that was a grace from God, because yeah. honestly, uh, prophets, you know this, yeah. we can get really impatient with people's process. <laughs> and we think— With our own, too. Yeah, and I think as a immature prophet— what I wanted to do is I wanted to accelerate everyone into their future that I saw. Totally. And so I wasn't as patient. And being able to pastor in the school of ministry taught me how to fall in love with people's yeah. process. And I think that actually matured me as as a as a prophet. I think prophetic people get this, you know, they get this bad gig about not loving people, right? Mm. And mm -hmm. not not being patient with people. Yeah. So I think the Lord's doing a new thing in us. Ben, you started being guided by God in dreams. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I have lots of dreams, but you were kind of the dream guy in our culture, mm -hmm. kind of the Joseph dreamer. Yeah. And how did that start in your life? When did you start having dreams when you knew those dreams were the language of God in your life? Yeah. Well, probably between the ages of 8 and 10. Um, really, for me, I had this unique, may, maybe weird idea, but I thought God named me. And yeah, of course, my parents gave me my name, but in some ways, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, God guided them, and they named me Benjamin Joseph. And I would read scriptures Old Testament and New Testament, the Old Testament. When Joseph. you were young. Yeah. And I would read the Bible and I'd read these stories about Joseph and he's a dreamer and my middle name's Joseph. I must be a dreamer. If God can speak to him in dreams, well, scripture says God's no respecter of persons. So if he did it for him, he can do it for me. So I, I had this idea 
from a pretty young age that God could speak to me in dreams, and I paid attention to my dreams. Wow. It, so that all started in your childhood. Yeah. And does, did any of your family dream? Is your mom or dad, like, did they have anything to do with shaping this idea that uh, that God is actually guiding you in dreams? Yeah. Or was it just your own journey by yourself? I think it was my own journey. I think mo- what mom and dad did was create a, an environment where hearing God's voice is regular. Yeah. So if if we can hear him while we're waking up, why can't we hear him while we're asleep and yeah. dreaming where our spirit's still yeah. awake? Um, and so I, I developed this kind of conversational relationship with God. And I was naturally a metaphoric thinker. Yeah. I thought in pictures, I would see things Symbols. and ask God questions. And so I think that put me uh, on a trajectory to to really understand dreams and understand kind of that, you know, God speaks in parables. He's, yeah. He speaks in signs and symbols, like you said, metaphors. And I just thought that way and processed that way with God. Has God ever given you like a personal strategy in a dream or really directed you? Yeah. Even I, you know, health is a big deal. Yeah. Um, one, one specific story I can think of was, uh, Benny Johnson came to me in a dream. So, well, I had a dream with Benny in it. Yeah. And Benny in the dream said, Ben, if you want to have more dreams, you'll eat a steady diet of liver. And I thought, what is <laughs> that? That's definitely the devil. <laughs> yeah. That's not God. Yeah. Not, you know, nowhere in the Bible. There. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, when we look at uh, a dream and a person shows up in a dream, yeah. uh, they can be maybe like themselves, but a lot mm-hmm. of times they're symbolic themselves. Yeah, representing something. Yeah, and Benny Johnson, she's an intercessor. She is into health. She loves health. And so I thought, ah, maybe this is Holy Spirit trying Holy. to speak to me about my health. So I woke up and I thought, what does liver have to do with dreams? And so I looked up liver and I found (laughs) out that liver has high concentrations of vitamin B6 and vitamin B12. And one of those B vitamins are directly connected to serotonin levels in the brain, which regulate your sleep cycle. So now I'm having dreams about having more dreams (laughs) in my health and God giving me strategy in a dream. Yeah. So did you eat the liver? Come on. I did. Confession I, time. I, I did. Here's what I did. Okay. Next day, I bought two pounds of beef liver, and Ugh. I looked up, you know, ben, on, on it's online. It's a sacrifice. Oh, gosh. I, I looked liver. it up, and I said, what's, what's the best, you know, recipes for liver? <laughs> and it was still straight garbage. Oh, it was horrible. And that night, guess what? I had zero dreams. <laughs> And someone in one of my classes that I teach asked me the next week, why didn't you just take the vitamins? I thought, God, what are you? He's Did, probably sitting up there. Hey, Michael, Gabriel, get yeah, over here. Yeah. I bet you I can get Ben to eat liver. Yeah, exactly. You know? So do you take the vitamin now? Yes. So you, you ditched the liver and took the vitamin. Amen. Oh, man. I don't know if God's happy with that. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, does everyone see. dream? Do you think every everybody dreams? Well, it's scientifically proven that everyone dreams. Okay. Not everyone remembers their dreams. Okay. And here's here's one of the uh, it's just a quick reason why I think a lot of people nowadays don't remember their dreams is because they're mentally exhausted when they go to yeah. bed. We we keep our phones out and we yeah. we're on our phones, we're on our screen time, we're on something and our brains are going all yeah. the time to where some people say I can't even sleep without uh, looking at my phone and I I go until mm-hmm. I'm exhausted and then I pass hey, out. Ben, don't try to condemn me. Okay. Well, all I'm saying is I'm just beautiful. If we're mentally exhausted, yeah. our brains don't have a capacity to retain what we're receiving in dreams. Many times people will dream and then have a deja vu moment. Oh my goodness, this is a dream I had. I didn't even remember. Yeah, I, now totally I had the moment. It. Yeah. 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 You know, um, I did a study. This is years ago when I crashed, uh, probably maybe 14 years ago now. Mm-hmm. And I was doing this whole thing on um, serotonin, and you know, it was it was all about me getting mentally and emotionally well. Yeah. 
And I came across this article about how important sleep is. I know yeah. we're talking right now about yeah. spiritual stuff, but, and one of the things that I learned is that in the last, from the, the end of the 20th century into the 20, now 21st century, that we actually sleep an hour and a half to two hours less a night. Exactly. Because of the invention of light yeah. and, and entertainment. Yeah. And so I think you're right. You know, there used to be the sun came up and the sun went down. And your sleep cycles were pretty much based on that. Yeah. And there was no television to stay up and watch. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot to do. And that 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 light, it yeah. synthesizes like, oh, the sun's up. I'm supposed to stay up. Yeah. And uh, that's why we encourage people, if you want to dream more, and I'd say this to any of you who want to dream more, limit your screen time. Two hours before you go to bed, turn off your screens. Turn off uh, your screens. Never, I never heard that before. That's and, good. And then you're not actually putting that light in front of your eyes. It's some some people have dimmers in their house or yeah. light candles or something like that. You're telling your body, Shut okay, down. it's time to rest. Yeah, that's really good. And that's not just a great. That's not great. Just great advice for your spiritual life. It's also a great advice for your mental and emotional life. Yeah, I I pretty much go to sleep. Life at the the same time every night and try and wake up at the same time every morning. I just can't do that when there's basketball game. Uh, <laughs> That's the problem. The Lakers are playing. I'm like, you're always watching me. I, I, yeah. Next morning, I'm like, yeah. you know, eyes hardly open. I love it. Tell me about how do you, how did you learn to interpret dreams? Well, really. Because they're kind of weird, right? Yeah. God, if God sell them like, hey, go here and do this thing and tell Joe I said hi. Yeah. You know, it's more like, you know, seven cattle, you know, calves eat, you know, se- fat calves eat seven skinny calves and yeah. all this kind of weird stuff, right? Yeah. And and you can wake up from a dream and think, oh, what does that mean? That must have been a pizza dream. And uh, what I find is a lot of times the crazier the dream, the more meaning it potentially yeah, could, could have. Happen, yeah. And and kind of the craziness of the dream is there to shock you. It's there to get your attention. It's yeah. there to say, "Hey, there's something in here." And and uh, for me, being young, first of all, number one, scripture. You want yeah. to look through scripture. Look at all the different spots where people dreamed, whether it was literal or metaphorical, yeah, and and symbolic, and and then begin to look. Uh, is there a pattern? You know, we we don't want to treat every dream like. Okay, the number three means this every time. Yeah. The color yellow means this every time. And that's where I have a, I love resources, biblical yeah. encyclopedias of symbols and signs and stuff like that. I, I love uh, people's books and resources, but it has to be accompanied with the voice of Holy Spirit. So yeah. Joseph tells the cupbearer and baker, he says, doesn't all interpretation belong to God? So if we want to be an accurate yeah. interpreters, we have to be abiding in the Holy Spirit. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit interpretation is, but we need to abide in the Holy Spirit, have that continual relationship, continual conversation with yeah. God. And then, you know, if an animal shows up in your dream, I start with the practicals. What's that animal do in nature? What's its it, what's its family life like? What's mm-hmm. its social life like? You know, what are the things that I can take that are practical? It yeah. says God's invisible attributes, his eternal power and his divine nature can be clearly seen through what he's created. So we're looking at all those things and we're thinking practically. If Chris Valentin shows up in my dream, it may be Chris but it may be symbolic of the prophetic. Yes. Because you're a prophet in the nations and people know that of you. Oh, I'm supposed to be best friends with Chris Fallatin because I had this dream about him. Maybe you're supposed to be best friends with the prophetic. Yeah, that's so good. I remember this is probably about a year ago. I had a dream and Bill Bill Johnson and I were being chased by this bear. And yep. we were running and running and we were running and running and this bear was chasing us. And when uh, when it, it finally, in the dream, right before I woke up, it caught us. Yeah. And it gave us a hug. And then the next night or a couple of nights later, I dreamt just this one thing. The bear is your friend. Mm. And I was like, how does weird? And I woke up and I said to Kathy, she, she, I said, you know, I had this dream a couple of nights ago. And then I had this dream, the bear is your friend. And she said, the bear is the fl- it bears on the flag of California. There it is. And I, immediately when she said that, like she just, she wasn't even out of bed yet when she said the bears, bears on the flag of California. Yeah. 
I'm like, oh, it can feel like California is against us. Like it wants yeah. to drive us out. It, you it's know, chasing it's, us chasing out. Chasing us out, you know, but uh, that, bear, and you know, and I, I text Bill and said, hey, the bear is our friend. California is our friend. Yeah. And so these are, these are really, in, for me personally, that was profound. Yeah. You know, that, that God is actually creating, a, that our state is actually going to be, it's going to be friendly to the church. And I love what you just brought up there mm-hmm. because it brings up a point that I think we should all pay attention to is God speaks in our context and he yeah. speaks in our, y- you know, our upbringing. So yeah. maybe a dog shows up in your dream. Well, you had a certain experience with a dog someone in another culture, and we are a pretty international school. So we have different cultures represented. So when I'm interpreting someone else's dream, what what could that mean in your culture? Yeah. And God sometimes speaks directly to issues that we're facing. And we know, you know, there's some good things and some other things happening in California right (laughs) now. and, And we can get focused on other things and God can redirect us in a dream like that. And when he changes our perspective through a dream, it changes how we operate and we do everything. And this speaks a lot of spiritual intelligence. Yeah, you know exactly. Um, so I, I think dreams are a portion of spiritual Absolutely. intelligence. You know, we don't want to just have two thirds of wisdom. A third yeah. of our life is spent asleep. Yeah, and and sleep is for two things: rest and intimacy. Yeah, and I know God's given you a ton of yeah. of strategy. How did you come on this whole idea of spiritual intelligence? And do you feel like you've been operating in that your whole life? Yeah, I'll, thank you. That's a great question. I think that it started when I was in my, in the business world, and mm-hmm. I tell the story about trying to fix this car I couldn't fix. And then the Lord gave me this word of knowledge yeah. and told me, it, you know, there was a, a broken wire off a diode that didn't even show up in the wiring diagram. And I'd been working on a truck for five days. Yeah. And so I fixed that. But, uh, you know, what actually happened is it opened the door to this whole idea that God knew how to fix cars, which, you know, Ben, now it sounds, <laughs> I mean, even it's embarrassing saying that. But at the time, I don't know why, but, but I had never been taught that God knew anything about things he didn't personally build. Like, yeah. obviously yeah. knew about our bodies and knew about creation. Yeah. Now, now it's just such a stupid, it's stupid to even think that. Well, I don't think it's super stupid. I think it's it's just we're ignorant sometimes. We just never knew that he cared about those things. Totally. I had a friend in, in Riga, actually, Latvia, and the guy's an investment banker, and he asked me the same type of question. Yeah. Hey, is it legal <laughs> for me to use the prophetic? And really what he was saying, and, yeah. and maybe you can answer this, the difference between the prophetic and spiritual intelligence. But he's what he's saying is, can I use my spiritual intelligence to help with my banking? Yeah. And you know, we're we're as a movement, we we love people in every sphere and we want them to influence in there with the fullness so good, of man. a relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. I think that uh I in in my book, I talk about prophetic ministry as yeah. a part, as you just pointed out. Yeah. It's one part of SQ, right? Yeah. But uh also the mind of Christ is actually tapping in to the thoughts of God. And so I I actually break this down. I actually got this while I was writing the book. Yeah. Well, I was writing on Romans uh, 12 too, you know, don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I was writing out this chapter mm-hmm. about when you renew your mind, you think like God. Yeah. So then I was, after I finished that chapter, in renewing your mind, think like God, how do I renew my mind? Mm-hmm. How do you build new neural pathways? You, you've heard me teach on some of that, mm-hmm. building new neural pathways. And so then I, I then I was teach. then I was, and then one of the next chapter was on the mind of Christ, which out, comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter two. Yeah. And so I was, I was going to piggyback on, this is a, 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 you know, one part of the renewed mind. Mm. And then I was like, wow, that's not actually what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians two. It says, you know, who knows the thoughts of a, a man except for the spirit of the man that's in him? And then it goes on to say, who knows the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God's in him? Now we receive not the spirit who's from the world, but the spirit who's from God that we may know thoughts of God. Yeah. So all of a sudden I'm like, oh, the renewed mind thinks like God, but the mind of Christ thinks God thoughts. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. And I've given this example a few times. So, you know, if Herbie lives next door to me, hates me, mm -hmm. he curses me every day, uh, then I, I think, okay, how does God think about Herbie? Well, mm -hmm. love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, yeah. be kind to people who are evil to you. That's how God thinks, right? So I, I just be kind to him when he's mean to me. Mm -hmm. But then one day I, I tap in the thought of God for Herbie. Mm -hmm. And I say to the Holy Spirit, Lord, show me why he hates me. And all of a sudden I tap into God's thoughts and God there said, you, go. you know, his father was a pastor and he abused him and mistreated him and lived one way at home and another way in front of the congregation. Wow. And when he sees you, he sees his father. Yeah. And he hates you because he hates his father because he was abused by his father. Yeah. Now, that's not thinking like God. That's thinking the thoughts of God. Yeah. And so now I can actually build a, a strategy. Uh, I call it sp a sporadity, like a spirit-led strategy <laughs> to actually it. help Herbie. Yeah. Not just by being kind to him when he's mean to me, yeah. but actually by, by undoing the bonds of wickedness, so to speak, like, yeah. like freeing him from the prison of bitterness and hatred yeah. and probably a whole lot of pain just to the word father in his life. Yeah. That's so powerful. that kind of opened the door for me. Yeah. The spiritual intelligence. And you just said something a minute ago uh, about neuropathways. Yes. H how is SQ connected to our neuropathways and how, how do we you know, I, I know we get in one vein of thinking yeah. and our brain is a certain yeah. way, but we can actually shift those pathways yeah. and change the way we think. Yeah, exactly. So if, if you think of your brain, metaphorically speaking, like a big jungle, and mm -hmm. then every time you think the same thought, you're cutting a path through the jungle. So if you walk through this path 500 times a day, like something's about to go wrong, yeah. uh, nobody likes me. Then, then you as you the more you think that thought, the easier it is to think that thought again. Yeah, and because uh, because your brain looks for the easiest path to come to a conclusion, wow. you use the least amount of energy to come to a conclusion. Yeah. So the more I think about the same thing the same way, yeah. The, let's say it starts as a, a path, and it becomes a lane, then it becomes five, three lanes, five lanes, six lanes, and then that's what we call a mindset. Yeah. A mindset is when I have such wide neural pathways in my brain mm. that I actually have like a freeway. Yeah. And so the only way to to build new neural pathways is I begin to take the on, off ramp yeah. uh, out of that. And I begin to I begin to cut like with the machete, so to speak, new neural pathways yeah, by proactively thinking differently. Like if I don't proactively think differently, my reaction is going to be back to the highway. Yeah, because it's easier to drive on the highway than it is to 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 go through the a brush, right? Yeah. But as I do it more and more, as I exit that freeway more and more, to all things work together for good for those who love God, yeah. for example. And I say, when something starts to go wrong, I go, "Well, you know what? It'll all work for my good." And I get off the foreboding highway. Nice. What happens is, is that it's a metaphor, but the the foliage begins to grow back on the road there. Yeah. And now I'm building new neural pathways. Now, the 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 so that's that's a great way to, to illustrate. IQ and EQ, right? Yeah. But SQ is when I actually think the thoughts of God. Yeah. Which I would call that the high way. Like nice. there's another way. Yeah. There's like I like if you will, it's it's a little bit like air dropping the thoughts of God into my spirit. Yeah. And that only is going to happen if I proactively connect to God. But let me say this, Ben, before we stop stop the call here, this interview is. Uh, people ask the question, why don't I get more spiritual intelligence, more yeah. SQ ideas? And I think it's because we solve our most problems at IQ and EQ. Yeah. And we and then we go, well, all we can do now is pray about it. Okay, well, if my last resort is SQ, yeah. I'm gonna have a walking trail to SQ and I'm gonna have a, a freeway to IQ and EQ. So that's good. What happens if we pray about it first? Like yeah. let's say you're gonna buy a car. And instead of like, okay, well, we went, we can't afford it. Well, maybe we should pray about it. Well, how about if we just pray about, Lord, do you want me to have a car? And if so, which car and where do I buy it? Yeah. And we started to get in this 
you know, we started to build a trail and, and then a road and then a highway yeah. to what does God think about this natural thing in my life? And so you're starting there. Yes. You're you're starting way over here instead of starting at all these natural ways that we've thought before. Exactly. That's brilliant. And I think that if you look at certain people in the Bible, and there wasn't a lot of them, mm-hmm. honestly, but like Daniel is a guy that actually, it seems to me like he tapped into SQ on a regular basis. Yeah, he did. He spent a lot of time asking God, okay, what do we do with this king mm-hmm. who is kind of crazy? You know, what do we do with these guys that hate me? And how do we move this country forward to the, towards the kingdom? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it, it, we, we kind of have to get, you know, if we spend eight hours a day or 10 hours a day or five hours a day on social media and, you know, three minutes a day reading the Bible and, and connecting with God, it, it's going to be no wonder that we don't have a very high SQ. Yeah, yeah. And everything, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love how all of these different topics really do play into our connection with this thing called spiritual intelligence. Yeah. And it's it's brilliant that you're pioneering a language to help us understand and help us connect to all of these, whether it's dreams, the prophetic, whether it's through scripture, through prayer, yeah. through worship, all these different kind of, yeah. y- you know, anchor points for spiritual intelligence. It gets us into that abiding mode. It does. Ben, um, before we go off this interview, yeah. you have some resources. And also I have people, they write me every day yeah. and say, is is there any way that I could get a prophecy over me? Is there mm-hmm. any is there anyone who could minister to me online? Yeah. And you got a couple of things going on with that. Could you just give people like how how yeah. could they tap into your resources? Well, we have uh either in person or online prophetic sessions. So okay. you you can go to uh Bethelprophetic.com or you could actually Bethel. Prophetic.com, prophetic. okay. or you could go to uh, Bethel.com and and look under the mi- different ministries and, and look under prophetic, and you can sign up for a session. Okay. Whether you're in person or we do Zoom sessions as well, we can get you prophetic words. And if you want to grow, I mean, yeah. we're talking about a lot of stuff, and we have a ton of things available, but at Bethelprophetic.com as well, we have a ton of e-learning online courses so that good. you can watch, whether you want to grow in dream interpretation and, and the whole idea of dreams, or you want to grow in the prophetic. We have so much in the way of resources for yeah. people, and uh, we'd love for you to check them out. Yeah. The other thing is we have a school ministry that's online. That's uh, check beautiful. that out. Yeah, same. You can get on Bethel.com and check on schools, and you can now go to school online, which is Crazy beautiful. Actually, Woo. we have 800 students right now online. So it's only beautiful. been going two years. And uh, we have people from all different countries. So I'd love for you to check out our school, check yeah. out uh, what Ben's doing with our prophetic community. And uh, God bless you. Thanks so much for listening to us. Ben, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you.